Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Bun Med where we discuss concise medical knowledge you can fit inside of a bun. Today we will be looking at the third part of the ECG series, focusing on the different segments and waves found on an ECG. The next bit that we need to look at is the P wave. So for the rest of the um, ECG interpretation, the way that I would do it is to look at the P wave and then just work through each aspect of it um, systemically. So the P wave, the PR interval, the QRS, the QRS complex, the ST segment or ST interval, and then the T wave. So the P wave, as I mentioned previously, is the atrial depolarization. And um, one thing that's important to know about ECGs is how many seconds um, it, it counts towards. So the most important thing to know is that each small box is 0.04 seconds, making each large box 0.2 seconds. So you have five small boxes um, in a large box. And this is important because it tells you if the PR interval, for example, which we'll go on to in a second, um, is too big or too small. So for now, it's important just to know this is what a normal P uh, wave looks like. And then we'll have a look at what an abnormal P wave looks like. So um, essentially, the P wave, as I mentioned before, is the depolarization of the atria. Now, you're probably aware that there's actually two atria. So the sinus node is essentially what fires the electrical current that I've been talking about. Um, from the get-go and that's actually located in the right atria So what that means is that the right atria um, is actually depolarized a, a few milliseconds earlier than the left atria Which makes sense because that's where the where the firing um, process is So if you look at this example, this is actually a normal P wave and we can see that the um, right atria depolarize first and then the left atria depolarize after that and so you get this smooth P wave um, going all the way through. Now in abnormal examples what actually happens is that the P wave um, looks looks wrong. So um, effectively as I mentioned previously the right atria depolarize first and then the left atria. So if there's a problem with the um, left atria, in other words, it's too thick, then what will actually happen is that it will look like a bi-peaked P wave. So it'll look like there'll be two P waves. And this is known as P mitrale. Um, the other problem that can happen is that the right atria is, is too thick or too big. Um, and so what this does is that it, it causes the right atria um, depolarization to actually be really high and it overlooks both the right and left atria's normal depolarization. So this is called P pulmonale. So it's important to recognize that it's abnormal, um, but that will come with, with practice and, and with time. So the next thing to look at is the PR interval or the PR segment. And this is the um, the difference, uh, this is the time between um, atrial uh, depolarization and the start of ventricular depolarization. So there is a difference between the PR interval and the PR segment. Um, and it's perhaps more important and clinically relevant to know the PR interval. So um, the normal PR interval is between 0.12 seconds and 0.2 seconds. So remember that previously um, I mentioned that each small square is 0.04 seconds. So that means each large square is 0.2 seconds. So in other words, um, the normal P wave, uh, the normal PR interval should be about one one square, um, but it could be between. Um, three to five squares long basically. Um, in terms of causes of a abnormal PR interval, um, it can either be too long or too short. Um, again, 
you don't need to know these things in detail right now, but it's it's helpful just to get some exposure of things. And one of the important causes that you um, might want to lo learn about is um, Wolf Parkinson White, and this is a condition, a congenital condition that causes um, a short PR interval. So it's usually less than 0.12 or 0.12. Um, and if we look here, uh, we can see that if we start from here, and it finishes about here, so that's one, two, three squares. So it's just 0.12, um, but it's, it's definitely on the lower side and the shorter side. And in this condition, um, with Parkinson White, you have a very characteristic slurred QRS complex. So you can see normally it's got quite sharp edges, but in this case, um, there is a bit of a slurring pattern. Um, and this happens because there's an accessory pathway. So there's another pathway for that current to actually go through the heart. Um, and this is what's causing the issue. And then um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have a long PR interval. Um, and this is in a condition called first degree heart block. Um, again, uh, this is just to try and introduce the topic, but you can see if you start from here and finish here, that's definitely longer. Um, it's a, it's definitely bigger than one large square. Um, so this is uh, abnormal, if essentially. So next we're going to look at the QRS complex, which, um, as we know, is ventricular depolarization. And it consists of three different parts. So the Q wave is the first downward stroke. Um, the R wave is any upward stroke, and the S wave is the downward stroke after the R wave. And you might think this is quite obvious when you're looking at a normal QRS complex, but there will be situations where the QRS complex is abnormal, um, and you can see this example here. So. Um, Sometimes you might be asked to, for example, name a QRS complex or identify the pattern that's associated with it. Um, and if we just go back to our um, main principles, you can see that the first upward stroke is an R. So this is going to be this is going to be an R wave. Um, the S wave is any downward stroke after the R wave. So this is going to be the S wave part, and then. Remember that R wave is any upward stroke, so finishing off with an R pattern. So this is actually called an RSR pattern rather than the normal QRS complex um, because the Q wave is the first downward stroke, but you don't actually have any downward strokes that happen initially. So there is actually no Q component to this. And again, this is characteristic of particular um, ECG pattern, but I won't talk about that too much now. The next thing to look at is the QT interval. So the QT interval is the time between the start of the um, ventricular depolarization and the end of ventricular repolarization. And normally it should be between 0.36 to 0.44 seconds long. In other words, it should be between 9 and 11 small squares. Um, so the QT interval can be too long or too short, just like a few of the other things that we've seen with the ECG. Um, short QT interval can occur for congenital problems, so short QT syndrome is one of the reasons. Um, long QT is perhaps um, more important to be aware of, um, and these are just some of the different causes that can lead to a long QT. Now, um, the reason that long QT is important to pick up early is because it can lead to this. Um, and this is called um, Tossard de Point. Um, and effectively what it is, is a broad complex um, tachycardia. So what that means is that the QRS complexes are a lot um, wider than they should be. And tachycardia, so the heart rate is of over 100. Um, and you can see it has what's called a polymorphic um, structure. So some of the QRS complexes are quite big, and then they get small, and then they get big again, and small, and big, and small. And um, yeah, this is quite characteristic of this condition. 
So if you ever um, get asked what is the cause of um, tossard de point, then you should say it's a prolonged QT interval. Um, and this can be life-threatening, so it's, it's important to pick up um, long QT. So thank you very much for watching the video. We hope you found it helpful. Please do look out for the rest of the ECG series on our YouTube channel. And if you found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you when we can. Thank you.